You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's WWE Pay-Per-View After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's WWE Pay-Per-View After Show. Yeah, Pay-Per-View After Show. Hello, yeah. everyone, and welcome to AfterBuzz TV. We are wrapping, or uh, recapping, Hell in a Cell. We're wrapping and wrapping. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Up very soon because it is very late here at AfterBuzz TV. I'm your host, Kathy Kelly, and it is a full house tonight. Yeah, it we is. Have a yeah. very large crew in here for the Hell in the Cell recap. Uh, to my right is the Walking Dale. Howdy, Dale howdy, Rutledge. howdy. How's How it are going? You? Pretty good. Yeah. Feeling hellacious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I okay. love it. Okay, well, we're starting ne off Never with again, that. never again. Across the table is Ryan Klum. Yeah, I, I think we have a representative from every, every after show. Every show here tonight. That's right. That's pretty cool. I, yeah, even, I guess even including Total Divas. Yeah. 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 All and right, of yeah. course, to your left, Christian Rosenberg. Yeah, you, hello, hello. The I'm, Total Diva himself. I am yes. the Total Diva of After Buzz. <laughs> this is true. You're yeah. wearing enough flowers to count. With his shirt. Hey. <laughs> you love it. <laughs> Follow the rosebuds. Join the garden. <laughs> and then sitting on the couch is Tom. Did you say join Tom the garden? Nicole. Join the garden, baby. Oh God. Hello, everybody. Tom Connolly. Oh. Hanging out on the couch over here. Feel yeah. Like over there? I'm, I'm kind of mad, though. I... I should have this belt in my hand. Uh -oh. So yeah, let's yeah, talk, break about, it down. talk about the uh, world predictions title at AfterBuzz TV. You know, Josh Showtime Paget was the champ for this past pay-per-view. And this pay-per-view, there was a draw. Yeah. Tom Connolly. Historic and draw. <laughs> Showtime Josh Padgett tied with perfect predictions. Seven yeah. for Four, seven. Yes. Predicted to perfection. Yeah. It's a little suspicious, yeah. actually. <laughs> Kaori won six for one. She's a powerhouse in these yeah. predictions. Uh, for real, she's the only one that predicted the draw on the last We've one. Clum, you and I suck at them. Well, I'm We've terrible. Been <laughs> I'm awful at these. With nine people involved, right? Nine people or however many people I think people we had like 11 now, or 12. To yeah. retain that title is a huge deal. Yeah. And I and just Josh have to give it. props to Showtime. I, I'm sorry, Tom. It's okay. Maybe, maybe next pay-per-view. We'll, but. We'll see happens on Wednesday on It's event. cool. Showtime. Yeah, he, he, okay. he might have a promo in store for main event. <laughs> oh. Josh. Oh. Well, we shall see. And I'm sure Josh has we'll a never promo. hear the end of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we will. He's already filmed six of them tonight. We're going to have to buy him new hats. His head keeps getting bigger. <laughs> But anyways. So let's get into tonight, uh, the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view live from Miami, Florida. And you know there are so many indie wrestling fans in Miami that I feel like they were not impressed tonight with some of the things that happened. There were not many pops from the crowd. I don't know, but they started out hot, They though. started out on fire. Started they love that opening match. I love that opening match. Yeah. I, I think I we all love that yeah. opening match. Yeah. Um, so let's first talk about the pre-show for a second. On pre-show commentary, we had Josh Matthews, Dolph Ziggler, uh, R-Truth, Caitlin, and Big E for a second. This was the worst pre-show they've had. Of this, <laughs> this was not a group that worked well. No, I, 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 a lot of these guys should agreement. not be in that spot. Our truth did not work in that spot. I thought Caitlyn was god awful on the spot. Ziggler she was. Pretty. She yeah, did yeah, look I mean, really Ziggler, nice. She looked nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, she looked nice. She then looked she nice. started yeah. talking. Yeah. I, Tom, I what mean, were you gonna say? Oh, I, said, I thought Caitlyn. Renee Young would have been a better fit there. Uh, Far better yeah. fit. Uh, Renee Young has this new place on the pre-show where she's doing the social media lounge. Yeah, yeah. Well, she busy. Uh, which we didn't see much of tonight. We saw it a couple times, but was yeah. El Torito there? Because I didn't miss the pre-show. No El Torito. No tonight. El Torito no. on the pre-show this time. But uh, she was That's sitting in her bullcrap. social media lounge. So, <laughs> good one. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. So, Axel 
got injured at a house show or on on Monday Night Raw. From what from what I read, apparently on Raw, he blew out both hips in some freak accident. Yeah. So there's I don't know no what kind of freak accident do you hit. You oh, tell me your hip squats. I mean, those are some deep I squats. I didn't notice. I really want to go back and watch Monday Night Raw yeah, from should. last week again because it. I did not see me any either. part, or I don't remember any part where he would have gotten that badly no. injured. We were yeah, all worried about know. Ambrose. We didn't think Ambrose anything about that. You never know, though. Sometimes uh, you know someone. Wa- I've seen quarterbacks just step back and snap their Achilles tendon. You would never think anything yeah. of it. It just sometimes it happens. It weird things. It might be some Something like the whiplash effect where you feel it the next couple mm-hmm. days. Or Absolutely. maybe he was just powering through the pain and then he, you know, yeah. got back Couldn't. to the where they were checking mm-hmm. him out and they were like, oh, no, you're not yeah. fit to wrestle. No, you, that you absolutely need does happen. A break. That you'll wake up the next morning and be like, ah, how did I, how'd that happen? But blowing you know, like, out both hips, that seems kind of intense. Yeah. And, and how long of an injury would that be? I mean, is this the type of thing where they'll force him to drop the title type deal? <laughs> seems like it. <laughs> kind I mean, of I feel like he that, would. Yeah, yeah he's but, now going to be forced to drop the title yeah. potentially. Yeah. Then he but, comes back and says, I never lost it. Yeah. True. Yeah, Shawn, so. Shawn Michaels did that. Yep. So when he lost his, was that when he lost smile. his smile? Yeah. He gave it, yeah. the, he gave it to title. Dean Douglas. <laughs> Since Biggie lost his match against Axel tonight, he got the consolation prize of interviewing the Shield on the pre-show. <laughs> he was so excited. <laughs> uh, but he did get a match later in yeah. the evening. We got on the pre-show instead Damian Sandow versus Kofi. And we haven't seen much of Sandow wrestling lately. No. Yeah. Mm. So this he's on is main kind event. of a, a refreshing... He's been hanging on main event okay. with Tom yeah. the Com. Yeah. <laughs> he's been um, winning on there, too. Probably having some good matches, I would assume. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They and were really good. another thing we learned during the pre-show is Rey Mysterio is on Spanish commentary. Yeah. What do we think about that? Pretty random. Yeah. But random, but good for like, I mean, okay, it works. Yeah, it's good to see him, really. Yeah. He, I was I was kind of surprised the crowd never, like, in the midst of the show, like, did a 619 chant or anything, though. Like, did it mm-hmm. seem like, oh, he, was he really, it was like, almost, he wasn't really there. Yeah, right, but the, you don't know that the crowd would know that there, he's there, necessarily. I doubt they put Ray up on the Titan Tron and announced, hey, everybody, Ray Mysterio is at the Spanish announce the, table. The they announced seemed, it to us on TV. The but. crowd also seemed very confused because we did get a lot of matches yeah. that were not yeah. scheduled for tonight. And they were all in a row. They were mm-hmm. all at the top of the show, pretty much, after mm-hmm. the tag the title. T- tag title. Yeah. So, yes, uh, what do we think about the standout? Kofi match real quick. I thought it was a solid match. Solid. It wasn't it wasn't anything that I was blown away by because we've seen it before, but what it needed to be. Yeah, it's both, not supposed to blow you away. It's a free match. Yeah, both both, both guys did their thing. Uh, apparently now Sandow uses the full Nelson slam as his finisher. Yeah, it's called the silencer. No, they they said on this was called the You're Welcome. Oh, they they even called it the silencer Silence. on. Silencer on makes more sense, yeah. but on the commentary tonight they called it the they You're don't know Welcome. What you're talking about. Mm. And on the the commentary, <laughs> they called it Silencia. I, I like the silencer better. Yeah. Uh, so, getting into the actual pay-per-view tonight, we open with the triple threat match for the tag team title, Rhodes versus Usos versus The Shield. Hot. Start off with match. Rollins mm-hmm. and Gold Dust in the ring. Rollins tags in one of the Usos, which I thought was a great strategy. What do you guys think? Well, yeah, it's, and that's the beauty of a triple threat tag match. Like, mm-hmm. you can tag anyone in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it even got to a point where um, years ago, I'm sure you remember, one of my favorite uh, raw moments in the Attitude Era was it was a Fatal Four match tag titles that involved the New Age Outlaws in it, and they both got tagged in, so they were both in the match. It's like, oh, you got to wrestle each other. I'm like, no, we don't. One of them <laughs> pinned the other one, so they New Age Outlaws won the match. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that was awesome. I remember I, I, that. And that was one of my favorite. That was, so smart. That was one of my favorite <laughs> raw moments. Cause I'm like, they just completely outsmarted mm-hmm. the other three teams in this <laughs> match. So since then, they pretty much like invoked a rule that the yeah, same can't team can't that. be in the match. Right. Yeah. But no. so with that though, you can still tag any other yeah. team, which makes it kind of interesting. Right. And it seemed like the Rhodes and the Usos kind of helped each other out a little yeah. bit against yeah. the Shield. Mm-hmm. Rollins, or Reigns, dominated for a large chunk of tonight, especially in the beginning. Um, what do you think, how'd the Shield look? I mean, the Shield was great. They pretty much, it was Shield and Rhodes were kind of a big chunk of this whole match. So it was, um, 
Usos kind of got the energy at the at the tail end there. It, it well. picked yeah. up a lot during the end where yeah. we see pretty much everyone in the ring and then there was uh, there were a lot of great false finishes then Cody superplexing Rollins onto everyone that yeah awesome. that was awesome I've, I've never, never seen, seen that yeah. before yeah. we were both saying like we have never seen yeah, that before <laughs> that blew my mind that was great <laughs> and that you got your money's worth mm -hmm. tonight yep. just from that Definitely. alone you got the you got the this is awesome chant during the first match of the paper <laughs> yeah and, and one of the things Christian was just talking about strategy-wise, too, of how it can be an advantage having the other teams. It can also be a disadvantage, and you have to strategize how to get in to the ring at certain times. Because, yeah, you can take a rest on the outside, but you have to be in the match to, to, to actually win it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you can't do that from the outside. So you have to then figure out how to creatively tag yourself in sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I felt so like that's kind of an interesting the thing Usos about these were shows. out of the ring most of the match. Yeah. And even there was a lot of, like, you know, they did a lot of false finishes where you thought they were going to win, and they just stand sort of on the outside. I thought they'd at least try to come in, you know, yeah. break up the te break and, it up a little and, bit. And right. JB and JBL brought that up. He was like, "This is the Usos' chance," and they've been on stand on the apron for like ten minutes. Yeah. yeah. But and and then what you were That's saying? Great though, one. You have commentators that bring that up. Yeah, like yeah, and they and they, they, we don't have enough of those. Right, and they brought up towards the end of it where um, I think it was Jimmy that was in in control in the ring when it was just him and Rollins was like, "Well, he's not the legal man, so he can't." And make the count, it's, and then they were dragging him to his own corner so he can go yeah. out of the ring to try yeah. to tag it in, which That's I love. You want. You I want, love that. You yeah. want the commentators to not always be on their outline for what's going on yes. in the night. Yeah. You want and, them to be saying what the fans are thinking well, here's because one otherwise the, it doesn't work. Here's one of the issues that you have with a lot of the commentators today. You've got a, a lot of commentators that were fans or, or or a professional or had nothing to do with wrestling instead of wrestlers. All the guys that I yeah. grew up watching, Gorilla Monsoon, uh, Jesse Ventura, even Vince Mann was in the business since he was a kid, all understood the wrestling business. And so you would have something like Jesse Ventura where, where you would have a mistake like the Usos made, mm -hmm. and he could take something and he could take a mistake in the ring or take whatever was going on and help make a story out of it, explain to the audience what was going on. So and is even, that a good thing to have Alex Riley and William yes, Regal and these yes, kind of guys absolutely. coming on yeah. yes. as commentators yes. now? And that, that, that's, why, that's why the NFL and the NBA specifically, the color commentators on all their shows are former yeah. athletes. Players. Mm -hmm. Right. And that makes they understand perfect. It. Play by play guy does not necessarily need to be a guy, but he obviously needs to have a great understanding yeah. of it. it but the color guy absolutely. Josh Matthews, there's a, there's wasn't a, he even in developmental? Yeah, he was, right. he yeah. was yeah. tough enough. Uh, yeah. 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 You know, and the thing is, like, when you're a fan and you know about and you, you follow wrestling, you're. Re you understand what stats are. You know, fans are really good. I, I know every WrestleMania who won every single match. There's a difference between knowing stats and understanding the art of what goes yes. into it. Uh, it's completely different. So when you have these wrestlers there, they can explain, they understand the psychology and, and the construction of what goes into these yeah. things. We like or, having or wrestlers fans there. don't really understand quite yeah. as much. They yeah. spent yeah. years learning the craft. So Cody comes in for the crossroads, gets the win. Do we think <clears throat> that was predictable? Uh, well, only yes, two of to us. Me it was. <laughs> yeah, only, um, only myself and Marquia actually picked the Usos to win. No, no one out of the eleven picked the Shield to it win this match. No, it would make no sense for for the Roads to drop the title They're at this point. Right it was now, too yeah. too quick. I mean, it was yeah. only a month ago, not even a month ago, like that they right. won the yeah. title. And so. it doesn't Every seem week. like this storyline yeah. yeah. is over yet. Right. No. And the only reason to have them drop the titles at this point would be then to get their feud going, and it's way too early. It would make no yep. sense to do brother versus brother. Obviously, they're probably going to wait to WrestleMania. I, I would think so. So you've got to, like, I can't imagine them dropping the titles till at least Royal Rumble. Yeah. It might have been a predictable ending, but I, I would have never predicted that um, superplex that oh, Cody God. did. No. And, and even just the finish of It was of a cool Gold way Dust. of getting into the finish, too, with yeah. Cody up, uh, up on the shoulder. And it just took everybody out, so you stop having that interference, because yeah. that's the hardest part of mm -hmm. having a triple threat, anything is yeah. run-ins. Mm -hmm. but Gold Dust punches him into the crossroads. The punch into the crossroads was great. Yeah. Like, I love the fluidity of it. Mm -hmm. it, was, amazing, it was really cool. And how Rollins takes match. it. Match overall, my favorite match Absolutely. of the night. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. They, they led strong. So yeah. Miz comes out in his gear, says he's not medically cleared, but that doesn't mean he can't fight. Yeah, yeah. not medi medically cleared to wrestle. Yeah, but I, it, but I can fight. It does what? mean that you can't. <laughs> they should have saved this tonight. for tomorrow night. This yes. should have been on Raw mm -hmm. tomorrow yes. night. The, there, there was no need. I, yeah, there was no need to have it other than fill time. But well, we could. I'd rather have. We had, ended up seeing Bray, which is we wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Yeah. No, I mean it, it's it's true, uh, and it's nice that we got those guys on the. 
pay per view, but it just it, I was I, I I wasn't invested I in this. I think they wanted the cane pop tonight. I agree. And that's yeah. What we saw okay. Is yeah, the you're lights right. go out. Rowan and Harper are in the that. ring. They attack Miz. We want Kane chant, and all of a sudden Kane's pyro hits. His music comes on. He runs to the ring, starts attacking the Wyatt family. They retreat, and then Kane starts choking Miz. There he is. Pyro music. Yeah. That's the segment. Yeah, I would have. I would have rather seen Dolph Ziggler have a match than this. Uh, yeah, they but he was on com- the <laughs> pre-show show commentary. Awesome. Yeah. You know, he was busy doing Rolling. nothing upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. This this was my one issue with it, and you actually pretty much brought it up when she was bringing it up, and you're like, "Oh, I forgot about this." That was the thing. All of a sudden, after yeah. this yeah. great tag match, the second segment of a pay per view, we have I one of the heavyweights return, mm-hmm. and, and you know it's a big deal. It he so takes out the wide, takes out the heels and a face. Wondering, oh, what's side is he on type deal, but then it gets lost in, in all the stuff. It would have made much more yeah. sense for like the end of hour one of Raw tomorrow. It's, yeah, it's absolutely. So nice it it should have been a big Kane event back, tomorrow though. night. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's nice to see, see Kane back, but I think a lot of us actually predicted that Kane would have been brainwashed by yeah. the Wyatt yeah. family. Yeah. Really so weird. there's a little bit of a disconnect there from what we thought would happen. But we're not to sure that that's happened. not what yeah. happened, though. I mean, yeah. because we he, he know, delivered the choke slam to Miz, maybe it was yeah, a game, but then maybe why it was attacked? What's the point of playing that game? And then, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see where it goes, but I I thought it was a little bit wishy washy. Yeah, well, I think honestly, WWE has been doing a lot of like nods to themselves, like as far as history goes, and. Kane That's either nice debuted in Hell in a Cell. Debuted or, in the first one yeah. 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah, so I think this was just one of those, like, remember? Kind of yeah. things that they've been doing lately. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think for that, I liked it. But otherwise, I agree with yeah. you. This is not a pay-per-view no. segment. This no, is a it, Raw it, segment. It, if, if you did it tomorrow night, as Chris just said, end hour one with it, it would have been a big sh- event last night. Yeah. Instead, it got lost in the shuffle mm-hmm. today. I agree. Yeah, you know? I, I think it, Yeah, I think that uh, with Bray's promo, though, at the end, he was like, you know, if you could only see the monster behind my eyes. And then Kane came out. So maybe he is what? with them. That's I thought it was kind of weird that he said that. Yeah. You know, mm. kind of like hinting. But why would he attack Harper and Rowan then? Yeah. Nah, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. To answer it, Tom. You got a perfect score for crying out loud. Yeah, come on, Tom. I, yeah, come I'll on, Dolphin. That tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I think we will see a lot more yeah. resolution to no, this. Dolphin, uh, by the way, we should officially announce like, Dolphin 1972 is actually Josh Padgett. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we've just, we've that discovered is. it. So we've discovered Josh Padgett is actually We're on Dolphin's 19, or 1925, <laughs> I think it is. Dolphin's 1925. Uh, so another match that was not announced before tonight is the mixed tag match that we got between Fandango and Summer Rae versus Kali and Natty. I didn't mind it. Surprisingly, I actually, I, yeah. I actually thought it was very good. Very I was good. pleasantly surprised the with girls. this match. I Going into this match, when I saw them all come out, Ooh. I was not excited for it. After the match was over... I thought it was great. Kali didn't screw it up. No. Kali didn't <laughs> screw it up. Screw it up. <laughs> Fandango was entertaining, Fandango and Natty and Summer Rae worked very well and together. Yeah. They it wasn't worked just excellent. a gimmick about who could dance better, which right. I think Thank was uh, uh. something that we were all dreading. And, and yes. The fact is the girls carried this match. Yes, they did. They, did. they completely carried it. Summer Rae, for that being her she, debut great. match on, on, on a yeah. pay-per-view. Yeah. That was let's talk great. about that for a second. And for, she and hasn't she's a model, She hasn't had any matches on WWE yet. Like She's had them in NXT before. She's the first lady mm-hmm. of NXT. Right. But this was her first match, and it was on a pay-per-view. Yeah. How do you think she did? I think she did great. I thought she did great. I thought um, the new, different gear than what she wears on NXT that she wore tonight. Um, more, like, dancer-esque. Yeah. More. And it made her character stand out more, and I thought she did fantastic. Yeah, I thought she did great. She's not the best wrestler down on NXT, but she's better than almost any of <laughs> the divas up on the current <laughs> roster, other than a, a handful. Mm-hmm. So I think she's great. I think a- she's going to be really good. NXT has a lot of amazing talent. Yeah. Yes, they do. Uh, the divas is especially down there. And I think most of the divas that are actually really good right now down there are actually wrestlers that were in the indies and are coming up other yeah. than Summer. Um, and I think this is one of the girls that was, I think, brought in as a model or... or, or she an started on or commentary there and then she transitioned into being a wrestler and I think that transition went and very well And a lot of her. times when you see those girls that transition, there's always something about them that you can tell that they're just... They didn't watch wrestling when they were a kid and, and there's just something mm-hmm. about... Like you watch Alicia Fox, you can just tell there's something about her that she doesn't just fully get right, it. Right. Um, oh, but she's Summer, awesome. oh no, she's really good and really <laughs> athletic, but if you look at her timing and her yeah. pacing, the way she moves around 
the ring. She doesn't move around like a wrestler. Well, she because did. most of the girls, especially, I feel like they only have a couple years of training as opposed to the guys who are in developmental for years it, it, before they it, even it, debut on the main roster. It also has to do with, I think, people who watch it. and, okay. and it, that, that There's a very big difference between people who've watched it since they were a kid and they understand that pacing and then people who, like, oh, you want to be a wrestler? So oh, that sounds really how do, cool. How and do you argue the guys money. that they recruit from um, the NFL or from certain sports teams that didn't watch as a kid necessarily? And you can tell sometimes. And then they you become can tell. These, I think a lot of the time they like still Like Bill Goldberg. Out. You can tell Bill okay. Goldberg didn't grow up watching wrestling. He was awesome. Well, he's a great he, example he, of your he, point. He was, he was, he was, he was amazing. <laughs> Uh, but but you know you can just tell you can just tell oh, sometimes bird, not always bird. but either way that, that later they really have yeah. faith in this yeah, that's like summer's yeah, he was on the show shit. later well, I'm saying, but uh, back to my, my point I'm sorry uh, summer summer for a model and someone who wasn't a wrestler she's really looking good and yeah. she's getting mm -hmm. some yeah. of that timing yeah. yes. surprisingly like some of those you don't always see it sometimes they do and she's I think yeah. she's one who might be able to figure it out how cool is this couple that Fandango gets to debut at WrestleMania and Summer Rae gets mm. to debut at Hell in a Cell. That's like a they, power and they both, and they both couple. Win, and yeah. they both win and they both did great jobs. That's and they danced so good tonight. Oh, <laughs> no. Awesome dancing. They're dancing the night away dancing. right now in Miami. Hey, Miami. Kali didn't dance. We, we, uh, we all win. I we all know. Win. Kali's the best dance. <laughs> Summer ended up I winning so. I can do the Kali. Up. That's why I like it. So Summer I would, and I would not have predicted this one. I would have predicted Natty and Kali win. I just I figured Natty would win like sharpshooter. I wasn't expecting yeah. a quick mm -hmm. roll up. Like yeah, that. It, was, it was very fast mm -hmm. towards the end. Natty right. put Fandango in the figure four, or yeah. almost yeah, locked. Yeah, they tried, tried to lock yeah. in a sharpshooter. Yeah, yeah, that was that was great. If they were gonna win, you wouldn't expect. Yeah, uh, you would expect Fandango to get over on Kali somehow, not the not the summer. So yeah, yeah. very interesting. Yeah, and we'll probably have a singles match on Raw between the two now. Hopefully, yeah. I'm excited. for Summer her. deserves it. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what she's got. We had two divas she matches could... tonight on a pay per view, and they both were good. Mm -hmm. and here I was ready to not like it. And, and this let's is put something her up against where... Naomi. You know, Naomi and Summer could be interesting. Think about earlier this year when we had no divas matches mm -hmm. on pay per views, coming to a point where we can have two and then be and, both and both entertaining. Yeah, they booted the women's match right off of WrestleMania. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it was like Man. it wasn't even a you... divas match. Six it was months a later, mixed tag. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was just a mixed tag in the first place. I, six six months later, we got is, two. And I've heard this might have something to do with it, but I wonder if it does is that, you know, Total TNA Divas. was having some unbelievable female oh. matches. Some of the mm. best women's matches of all time they were having over some of their last pay-per-views. And I heard that's why AG and Caitlin were given a lot of time a few months back. Mm. So I wonder if they're only peeking going, you know, we need to, you know, these... They're making us look really bad yeah. over there. I, think I mean, the, the knockouts it, division blows away the Divas division. A lot of it is Total Divas being on air, and they yeah, want to give helps. certain Divas that a push. Helps. But I think that they are they have better talent now than they did mm -hmm. however many months ago, or the girls have developed more. Right. They still have the not as good talent, but they have some better talent ready to replace the not. Yeah, so... Let's move on to Ambrose versus Big E for the mm -hmm. U.S. title. Before we get into that, I just want to mention, if you're watching us on YouTube, then please take 30 seconds. Just go over to our iTunes page, type in After Buzz TV. You can find this podcast along with all of our other wrestling shows and pretty much any other after show for TVs you like uh, or uh, TV shows you like. We have everything from what Once Upon a Time to I just did Eastbound and Down, down earlier tonight. I do Supernatural too. Supernatural over there. Everything, um, and then we also have Raw, SmackDown, Main Event, NXT. NXT. So. Total Divas talk starts in a couple weeks. Total Divas. Should oh, we yeah. mention the contest real quick? Yeah, very fast. Uh, <laughs> yes. Lightning quick. <laughs> We're doing a uh, contest over NXT uh, for a uh, performance, performance center, center T-shirt. -shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, so the contest we're running is, and we got to be specific on this. WWE 2K14 comes out on Tuesday, and it's got to be that video game, not WWE 2K13 or not 13 or 12 or anything yeah. like that. Uh, take your favorite After Buzz wrestling host, any of one in this room, and Phil Svitek. Uh, make them as a character in WWE 2K14. That's where I know him. Make from. an entrance. Put Smack a gimmick down. on them so you can make Christian Rosie Rosenberg have roses coming out. Hey, my name's not Rosie. <laughs> it's not Rosie. It will be Rosie Rosenberg. Uh, so well, that's your gimmick name is Rosie Rosenberg. So, I think so his, roses or his what, whatever. Be the thorn. Well, yeah, exactly. But you don't have to put the finisher on there. We want just entrance video. Throw it up on YouTube um, and uh, tweet it to us. Tweet it to me and Kathy. 
Ryan Lebrowski already made a couple, and they are phenomenal. I love. I have, unfortunately, they're 2013. 2013. But we love them Ooh, so, so they are much. Still so they great. And, I, yeah. and didn't send them to me, and I'm like the main judge. So. Uh, mm. But you could win a Performance Center shirt, and yeah. uh, unfortunately, sure it has me. to be in the continental U.S. to yes. get the shirt. Yes. But you can still have bragging rights and win if you are Absolutely. overseas. Absolutely. Well, well, and you can enter as many times as you like. You so could, if you want to make one of everybody, you can make an after buzz and, battle royal. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be I oh, would I'd love, love that'd somebody be awesome. <laughs> I'd love that. I would love to see uh, Paget versus Corey. I was gonna say uh, Tom Connolly, but yeah. oh, that'd Kaori. be good too. I'd would like to see. Hilarious. I think we should have a Kaori versus Cupcake Cat fight oh. in uh, WWE 2K14. Someone make that happen. I mean, you can see that in person. So oh. Whoa. Whoa. we still need a cupcake on a pole match. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you have scared Kathy. So, uh, Ambrose versus Big E, guys, for the U.S. title. Lots of blood in this yeah. match. Right away. Um, yeah, and, uh, I actually. So, Big E gets a huge cut under his eye. Ambrose's chin looks like it's busted. Uh, someone tweeted me afterwards that apparently they read that Big E received seven stitches and Ambrose wow. received eight. Yeah, wow. I, saw the, uh, I saw the pictures on WWE. This is a really good match. It was great. This uh, is great. A pleasant surprise, it, again. It, it I like the undercard like almost better tonight. match at mm -hmm. times. It was pretty intense. Big E is such a beast. He Biggie's uh, spear he did through the ropes. Through the suicide, ropes. suicide dive. Suicide, yeah. Basically a suicide dive. And for a big dude like that to be doing it, that'd be scary to do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't even want to be in the front row. No. <laughs> and that's all, I mean, I've, I've, I've I can see why I've practiced Axel those before. was injured. Yeah. <laughs> it's very easy to get your feet caught up in the ropes and take a nosedive. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's not an easy yeah. thing to do. But, but I did I did feel bad because this is the part where we were kind of talking about earlier, earlier with the crowd. Because here we had the Miss segment, then the mixed tag, and then the Big E match. Because they're expecting Big E versus Axel, mm -hmm. but they thought that was on the pre-show. Like, oh, maybe they moved to pay-per-view. Some people might have not seen online that mm -hmm. Axel was hurt. And the crowd was just kind of silent for most of this match in confusion. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely confused. But it turned out to be an amazing match. I think it's great. I feel like some of the matches that weren't announced before tonight ended up being the better matches of the pay-per-view. I actually think the undercard... Uh, outperformed the main event. The, yes. the more the, marquee matches. Yeah. Not that the marquee matches were bad because they were all actually good, yeah. Yeah. but just, and maybe it was because I wasn't expecting it, but I really enjoyed the undercard tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. I think it was a more well around pay per view. Like, out of all the matches, mm -hmm. it just came together really well. The, the order and the pace and well. Mm. Ironically, for, I feel like I complained the most out of everyone for having so many pay per views in such a short amount of time. I feel like. Every pay-per-view that we've had in this three-week, you know, two-month time span has been better and better, honestly. Mm -hmm. they've, like, yeah, Night of, Night of Champions was the worst of the three, then Battleground, and then this one was much better than Battleground. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, Battleground wasn't that good, though, right? I mean, a lot of people it, were... A lot of people hated people it. People were calling up and asking for their money back on that one. But well, well, same with Night of Champions. Companies. What, what was that one like? Because fought? after Daniel Bryan um, lost the title the next day, people were like, whoa, we were supposed to have this, and they yeah. somehow got their money back. It was that ridiculous. That doesn't make any sense it to me. It doesn't. <laughs> but I thought Battleground was better than Night of Champions, but then this one was much, much this better. This one was really good. This was good. a solid card. Yeah, sure. this is good tonight. Ambrose ends up winning by count out, SummerSlam. retains the U.S. Oh. title. Biggie what wins you, count out. What'd you guys think? Biggie oh, won by count out. Biggie won by count out. Yeah, but uh, Ambrose ends up retaining his title. This was good. Yeah, at the end when Biggie so, still grabbed him and hit his finisher and held the title up, that moment. Okay, this title means something. Yeah, exactly. that's what we're saying yeah. is, is they just made it relevant. And if you had put the title on Biggie tonight, the title wouldn't have been meant as meant as much because uh, it would have just been a throwaway match. But now with him holding that up, now we got a little feud. Now it's going to mean something. Yep. Chasing this title now, all of a sudden, the United States title might mean something, whereas it really didn't mean anything before tonight. Mm -hmm. Even though Ambrose had, or it, it had like it, six it, months now, right? It hasn't. It's it hasn't had meant anything in a bit. Yeah, no, it's just been yeah. around his waist mm -hmm. as a placeholder. They haven't done anything with the title. Right. Uh, it, it hasn't been relevant with him. He hasn't needed it. But he's someone that they. Should, you know, he's good enough that they should be building feuds around him. They, they should, should never awesome. let titles, in my opinion, titles should never sit around someone's waist and be irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And if it is, you should get rid of it. Yep. Because then I there's no reason so. to have it. Yeah. That's why I keep saying we have too many titles, because too many of them don't mean anything. Why wouldn't a roster full of wrestlers be challenging Absolutely. one of the title exactly. holders? And what, does it, yeah. and what do these titles really mean? Like, what does the United States title mean over the Intercontinental title? We used to know, but now that the brands are split, we don't really, we've they got all these belts 
they're not around. Split anymore. They, yeah. We don't know what they mean. You know, when you want to be an uh, NFL champion, you win the Super Bowl. There's one title you're going after. Right. You know, and the Intercontinental title is always that secondary kind of title that was your. If you got that, then you were next to get yep. kind mm -hmm. of move up. And now you've just got all these. Props. Well, they never defend them either. They never Even defend on Raw, them. Right. Smackdown, just yeah. put it on line. Yeah. It's it's. If you're if gonna, gonna have gonna, them all, let them mean yeah. something. And if they're yeah. gonna win the match anyway, just mm -hmm. let them defend them. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. make any Definitely. sense. Definitely. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, this is a great match overall, and an unexpected feud that I think we're gonna see. It was kind of a happy accident. Yeah, because it was supposed to be Biggie feuding with Axel, and now yeah. we're gonna get yeah. Biggie I mean, feuding with Ambrose. Not which, a happy well, accident for Axel, but a happy accident that this feud e. has come about. Yeah, yeah this uh, this is better for Biggie than Axel. Yeah, <laughs> and then they got busted open. Now it makes it even more personal. Yes. Now, now B, mm -hmm. you can say like, you know, you you busted me open. I'm gonna have a scar yeah. now. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and I'm, I'm very Ambrose cut the promo saying I made you bleed. Yeah, because mm -hmm. Biggie for I mean he, Biggie's only been wrestling I think about four or five years, yeah. and for someone as green as he is, he's really good. Yeah. He's like, another he, football he's player. An he, and he is, yeah. he's yeah. a he was yeah a football player and power lifter mm -hmm. um, from Iowa, right? From Iowa, yeah. He, yeah. Went um, to... But uh, and and. and I remember when he first came in, it's like, oh, okay, here's the next big black guy. You know, here's your next Ezekiel Jackson or whatever. And he's so not that. Do we like him more as a baby face now? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, th I, th I, think, I think he can make it work. He uh, made a, a pretty smooth transition, oh, yeah. even though it was only, what, a week and a half ago that it happened? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, this... he should have been a baby face from the get. Like, I thought they should have turned him baby face very quickly on, I, on Dolph. Uh, I liked because him he, with everyone Ziggler, liked him. Yeah. I liked him with Ziggler. Yeah. 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 I think they're, they're selling him as a stronger man now, though. Like, he's, he's like, kind of doing. That, oh, absor absolutely. that absorption yeah. reactions to a lot of things yeah. now. He's, mm -hmm. he's kind of what's beast for business. But I, I think, he was, <laughs> I think he, he was a guy that could have gone baby, I think, a lot faster. People wanted to cheer him. He could have, he could have been that, and they just kind of held him back because he was in that storyline, and it wasn't. I think that I was waiting for it. It was a good way to debut someone, though. Absolutely. He he keeps getting built up and built mm -hmm. up, and now he can say, you know, I've proved myself to the point where like I clearly want to be yeah. a champion. Mm -hmm. Let me be a champion. Right. And and the crowd wants and, it too. And yeah. the crowd will be yeah. behind it now. It's it's completely different than when we've seen Axel debut or Bo Dallas right. debut. Yeah. It, this one works. And, and he's good. Him and yes. uh, I don't say Ambrose is excellent. You know, to put the, putting these guys together was really good because you've got just a a veteran in Dean Ambrose who can carry a guy like Big E through a great match, and, and I think they'll have a really great series. I, Way I, better than having Axel. I also did kind of find amusing in the, like the back at the pre-show when Ambrose was calling Big E a rookie. But it was like, didn't the two of them kind of debut around, around the same, the same time? time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Ambrose a month, a month after. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Ambrose has been wrestling ten. Well, plus I, I mean, he's. I know that, but I'm, I'm talking as far as WWE it. TV absolutely. was. Yes. Oh, absolutely. I yeah. mean, it, which is I guess like when Miz was. Uh, Daniel Bryan's uh, exactly. veteran, and, and he's like, "I'm gonna teach me a superstar." He's like, "I've been wrestling like ten years longer than you." I remember dude. you on MTV? Yeah. <laughs> CM Punk versus Ryback and Heyman. Yeah, forklift. Finally, the cage. Oh, oh, boy. Scissor lift. Don't, scissor lift, not don't a forklift. What is it? Yes scissor lift. Forklift. Excuse me, scissor lift. We're going to encourage other My forklift one problem with this is this negated the the stipulation <sighs> that Punk got to win yeah. on on Raw. I mean, there. There was no the stipulation wasn't there. It was a it was a cheat. So um, one of the other things that a lot of fans probably noticed from tonight is Hell in a Cell 2012. We have the same participants in the same exact match, just switched up a little bit. We mm -hmm. had mm -hmm. CM Punk as a heel, Ryback as a babyface, and Taman, of course, at the time was CM Punk's uh, and no manager. Brad Maddox. Yeah, and, just no Brad Maddox yeah. in this one. I was doing the difference. Yeah. Um, Although I do like that they did the low blow to call out basically again, yeah, what again a little bit of the history of what happened last year at Hell in the Cell with uh, the low blow. I Ryan that was cool. the Broski just sent me the uh, the link to his. Hey, there he is. Thing. So there we go. What's Thank up, you, Ryan? Ryan? The <laughs> so, uh, thanks yeah. for my winning Hell in the Cell match. There was. There was way, way too much kendo stick in this match. There was a lot of kendo stick. There, <laughs> there was were like ten of them, right? uh, tables, everything. I mean, that's that's just what you get in a cage match. I think they've really been pushing the kendo sticks lately. Yeah, though. I mean, I understand. I understand them not wanting to use you mean chairs. The Singapore cane. It's the Singapore cane, the kendo stick, whatever they're calling it this week. Um, I understand what, them. What we? Yeah, I understand them not using the chairs because of what they did later on in the night yes. in right. the other Hell in a Cell match. Uh -huh. But it's just like there's. What about trash cans? What about yeah. cookie sheets? I mean, what about the cage? What about the actual cell? Just use Ryback. Cell. Cell. Use Ryback cell. Use, use a cell. cell. That's the best weapon out there. Yeah. I mean, it's, you're telling me how brutal this thing is, but then you're pulling out kendo sticks. Rake his face on the fence. Yeah. You know, yeah. come on. 
I do I do like the pop you get from a cookie sheet, but honestly, yeah. a cookie sheet. <laughs> there's a there's a really um, good. Those uh, can be better used. For <laughs> yeah, yeah that's a waste of not that, making cookies. That would piss Kathy off the next time she needs a cookie sheet on Raw. Yeah, there's uh, someone if on If you want to go heal, hit someone with a cookie sheet. <laughs> uh, great great guy to follow on Facebook is uh, Angry Wrestling Vet, who always is putting out really good yes. wrestling advice out mm-hmm. there. And I'll never forget one he put out there. He's like, "What's my favorite illegal weapon out there to use? The ring." He's like, "There's so." many things to just destroy yeah there's so much you can do with the ring and the cage and stuff like that you don't need the other stuff just get creative with that i don't know if anyone else noticed we all noticed it while watching but uh the you've got to be essing me Mouthed by oh, uh, well, when, 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 when the match started. This is a list that they couldn't drive this is down. Yeah. Couldn't work. So this is something. And I think that Heyman promo was about. improvised. Yeah. Um, so Heyman's supposed to come out on this. It's not a forklift, but this scissor lifting lift. machine scissor lift. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he's coming out. There's clearly some technical difficulties. At first, they run into some equipment, and then <laughs> it just has this like it's not moving forward. Then it stops, and it's moving forward a couple feet. Then it goes to the Side a it little felt bit. like Austin Powers. Finally, yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. It finally gets to the ring, and they get Heyman on top of the the cell. But it it clearly took a couple extra minutes. Yeah. And oh boy, only a couple. Thankfully, it doesn't seem like they cut anything else later in the show, but. It took up some serious time. Yeah, some time. You, can, you can make up a minute here and there. Well, yeah. it's, it's, it didn't take up more than an extra so minute. So you should have cut that promo while that was happening. Do, well, yeah. kind of we didn't people. know it first. Did we but, think that uh, his promo was on the fly? I, I think so because the way it was set up, and I mean, I would have to go back to here because I don't remember because we were all just focused on the scissor <laughs> lift not working. <laughs> but I don't remember if Justin Roberts originally announced Ryback and Paul Heyman. Ryback's music plays forever. They finally stop that. Then Justin Roberts introduces Paul Heyman by himself. Uh Uh-huh. And then he finally gets to the cell. And it's like, well, we still need another minute or two to get him up. Yeah, I I guess to really figure out if that was... On the fly or not, you would have to find out and see if they. You would have to be friends with creative. No, yeah. no, 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 I mean to go back and watch, you'd have to try. Other than Analyze that, it. try to see if there's anyone that got messaged to Heyman to cut that promo. Yeah. Because he would have had to been told to do that. Right. He wouldn't have just grabbed that yeah. and cut it a promo like on F- his own without someone going. We need you to kill two yeah. minutes, which does happen. Well, someone rarely. would have had to run over and give him a mic. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it would it, it would have to be you know yeah someone who's mic'd up the yeah. the referees yeah. or someone getting the the message out to him, but. That's the question. So you see someone run and up there, And there's only two people in the WWE that can improvise a promo like that on the spot on pay-per-view. CM Punk and Paul Yeah, Yeah, because yeah, that was amazing. Of you yeah. would let amazing him do that. promo. Yeah. So, you wouldn't let most guys do that. Regardless, no. it was worth it. Once he got up there, just the shots that we got of him like leering <laughs> from the top of the cage was so worth it. I want to talk about the after the match. Uh, CM Punk ends up winning, but after the match, sticks CM Punk sticks climbs, down his pants. climbs the cage Gets up to the top, starts attacking Heyman, uh, ends up uh, hit a big wood stick in his pants, GTS. climbing up that uh, climbing up that cage. <laughs> is that a kendo stick in your pants? Yeah. Or is that <laughs> no, Singapore cane. Good morning, oh, Singapore yeah. cane. Um, yeah, CW was a Singapore cane. So well, yeah, I guess it's against Paul Heyman, scary, so it's a though. Singapore cane. Yeah, yeah you were you were freaking out. I, w- it, I was freaking out because it looked like there. I don't know how well that cage is put together, but I don't it looked like it, it was no. dipping. No. I think they're better than they used to be. You, but yeah, we've seen people footing, go through them. Yeah. When you don't have your proper footing and you're going to do <laughs> moves like that, it it can. Things can go wrong. I don't think they zip tie him anymore. Like you see, like <laughs> no. when the foley went through, the zip ties falling <laughs> yeah. down. Uh, I'm sure they're a I little, mean, that's little what, bit better that's now. That's what but I'm going off of because that's that's what, we're, what I've that's, seen that was, and that's what the Hell and Cell is most known for. Yeah. Was that 15 years and ago? Was 15, 97, 98? 15. Yeah. Well, that yeah. one was 98. I don't know if you noticed, but at the very end, after uh, Heyman was knocked out, we see you know we get this wide shot of the cage. CM Punk standing on top. Heyman's knocked out. We see, uh, I think it was just some worker there. He's signaling. He's doing like a, you know, watch out. Like, don't come down or yeah. whatever. And CM Punk just stands up there. I, I think to so. me, I think to me, them signaling that would mean, oh, uh, the camera's still on you. Pose some more okay. before you start climbing down. I don't think it would have been bad to see up. him climb down, though. Well, like, Heyman was not... dead for like 10 minutes on yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Did they show how he got down? No. They, they never do, right? They never showed down. it. They Do just lift think... the cage up and he just <laughs> he floats away. <laughs> he floats away. Come on, everyone. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so backstage, we get an interview. Renee Young talks to Daniel Bryan about his upcoming match of the night. What do we think of this segment? I, I'd like to remind her that it was the Miami crowd that started the Yes chant mm-hmm. two years ago, yeah. or a year and a half, yep. whenever it was. Day after WrestleMania. Yeah, uh, I, w- rest I, w- my 28. I was at that Raw, and it was it was really, that was the hottest crowd that I've ever been a part of, was yeah. everybody just going crazy. Yeah, no, just, was, just the, <laughs> love for, the love for Daniel Bryan was kind of birthed from the hate of Sheamus winning that match the night before. Yeah. Just like, everyone was like, yeah. everyone was ready for like the them to steal the show at WrestleMania. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know, I know, I was. That was, a, that was a great way to start that show off, though. That 18 seconds, nobody was expecting it. Blew my mind. Yeah, it was a great way to. It did exactly what it was supposed mm-hmm. to do. Yep. El Matadores versus the real American. Hey, hey, there are two of them, so it's Los Matadores. Oh, Los Matadores. <laughs> That's plural. Yeah. Done. Typo. <laughs> Didn't pass, pass and, and Spanish one. Paul Heyman is still on the cage as yes. we came back. Yeah. The cage is still, they're like, they're like, we're still getting We're still Paul working Heyman on down. Heyman. Let's have another tag match <laughs> yeah. while we're working on this. Los Matadores versus the real American. Zeb says Matadores can't prove they're legally able to be in America, nor can most of the people in the crowd tonight. Oh, they, oh. they did not like that. They did not like that. Because it's true. No, I'm kidding. I, I, like how, I like how El Torito has pay-per-view gear. Tonight was El Torito Negro. El Torito was was black tonight. Yeah. I mean, it was just like, so he's going to be different colors now? Like, next baby he'll be white, next yeah, baby will be blue, next... Maybe there's going to be a whole bunch of them. Yeah, they get the white and black one. He know. accidentally uh, did his laundry with the shield, and... Oh. <laughs> so, don't you know to separate? Don't you hate it when that happens? Cesaro ends up spinning, I think it was Diego, 31 times during this match. You can tell them apart. Uh, no, what? I think that they said that what, on the yeah. what, what I love was we're at around like 22, 23. It looked like he was about to drop him, and then Cesaro got like a second, second win. win. Yeah. And then just picked him right back They just up. need to go with the El Conquistador way and just go uh, Matador Uno and Matador Dos. <laughs> yeah. it's just... I can't tell them apart. No. Well, they have nothing on their tights that signify yeah. who's who or anything. No, no telltale no tattoos. tattoos. So yeah. The Conquistador should come back to just call them. one of them the other thing and no one will know. Or they call them Primo and Epico because we can tell that. Mm, well, Michael that Cole didn't even, know, didn't even know who was who in the ring the whole time. Yeah. Got, I think that's uh, I think that's him. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I wrote yeah. Diego mm-hmm. question mark. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I just wrote Los Matadors every time uh, they did something. So. I, got all the Puerto Rican Matadors. <laughs> yeah. I like their outfits better tonight than their normal one. It looks yeah. like the blue the, one was better. The yeah. mask might have fit a little bit better or something because normally their nose is like yeah. kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great teamwork by the real Americans, though, S- Swagger tries to get in the Patriot lock while Cesaro pulls the rope away. Loved it. So yeah, like one that. of the Matadores couldn't break the hold. I don't know which one it was. Um, and then the Matadores end up pulling out the win. After the match, Zeb is crying in the ring. Didn't look too manly yeah. there. What do we think of this? That, that's the American way. Yeah, yeah. If you don't get what you want, you you crawl and cry. Bald, bald eagles cry, too, you yeah. know, Kathy. <laughs> Yeah. I, was, I wasn't a fan of this El Torito coming in and throwing the real Americans around at that. That 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 that, that wasn't it good. It didn't seem as believable. No, they, uh, should, they shouldn't be taking those moves from him. Torito, he like threw Cesaro. He threw Cesaro, Cesaro with a hurricanrana, uh, and then uh, I forget what he did with It was swag. like a crossbody on the yeah, yeah. ring. Oh, that's right, he sold a cross. It's like he's... You should be catching them. They're like you. He we should not be taking out guys that are six foot five. We I'm should sorry. have. We should have a handicap match tomorrow. El Torito versus the Real Americans. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> El, Torito, El Torito will win. El Torito should be getting it and almost they can't even, get it over. And then the Los Matadores come and will hit him and, and help assist him over or something. But he should not be. They've been making throwing him these guys so around. strong. Too. I, I know, but but it's by, crazy. No, I'm just saying it's crazy. Saying weak. that. He's the strongest of the three mm-hmm. of them. You can make and them look strong without killing them. And that's what I think as a fan, yeah. yeah. We get a Cena package after this match, and then we go to ADR versus Cena. Crazy reaction for Cena. At first, the the crowd was going wild for him, and then, and then five the seconds later, start coming. <laughs> Dude, this... This guy just got back yeah. after two months. Yeah. He should have been out four to six, and you guys are booing him. Yeah. Um, and breast cancer awareness. Yeah, month. and it's all uh, pink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Dale said it best. He's like, wow, this guy really hates breast cancer. I'll, I'll tell you two what they, we should have done. And I saw uh, uh, superfan Sam Fines posted this on his Facebook, and I thought it was a really good idea is that uh, Del Rio should have taken Cena out and he should have been gone for another four months. Like, he should have re-injured the arm tonight. So Cena's in for one show. Yeah. And I say, what you do then is you have Cena 
then drop, uh, have Sandow come in, steal it, and have Cena out till Mania you or know, whatever. Cena won't let that happen. And, and, then, yeah. and now, right? And I'm Cena doesn't want to be out that mm -hmm. long, and that's that's yeah. really what it is. But it would have given more got time for other guys to to <laughs> rise up. Yeah. It would have made would've... ADR matter, which it, yeah. Right, right, and which then you would have this big right feud between the two of them mm -hmm. when he'd be coming back. So it, yeah. it would have been really great, but Cena gets we almost got Cena. no yeah. offense during the beginning of this match. They tease Sandow to come back while we're watching the match, which that signifies that he's not, not gonna going happen. to happen. Passion yeah. tonight because we see that twice. Twice, he's, just, uh, he's like gonna get he's ready to sprint <laughs> to the ring. I just might. <laughs> All right. um, and then. At the end, ADR locks in the cross arm breaker on Cena's bad arm, but Cena ends up getting the win. Would have been nice to see a new finisher from Cena, but... Nice have yeah. done the same thing for 11 years now. Yeah. Come on. It's just, Let's see I mean, that's, that's not true. He, he doesn't pump up his sneakers anymore. Uh, hey man. He man. did change Which, his wardrobe. Actually, yeah. I do miss. <laughs> you, you don't, you don't change your finisher, man. Together. That's your finisher. I mean, he's won how many matches for how many years with that? They, you, you they changed the name before they changed the move. Yeah, yeah. Which they have done, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, you don't take the Stone Cold Stunner away from Steve Austin. You don't take yeah. the leg drop around from Hogan. Those are iconic moves for those people. So, yeah, but I feel like he could at least do something. Just change. You can add, you like can, Jericho has like the you know he did code do, breaker now. Like, he did do you know, a twenty, but you got to realize though the code breaker was because he needed a pinning finish yeah, the, as opposed the to the walls of Jericho, yeah. and the line salt was no longer really a true finish. Uh, so, Cena so, did do a tornado DDT tonight, which and, he doesn't really and do. And Cena yeah, already has a, a submission finisher, yeah, so he has two finishers. Do you think he was wrestling a little bit differently than he has in the past? I think it's part of the story. Yeah, be, more be more timid, more cautious. He was so more cautious, and he was flying a lot more. More yeah. Later on, yeah, drop realized. kicks, yep. uh, high cross bodies off the top rope. You know, Cena was, went through the air uh, a bit more than normal. For it only being two months, it is very impressive. Mm -hmm. After the match, we see a Wyatt promo for Survivor Series. I didn't nah. like this promo at all. It it, it 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 made the Wyatt family feel real goofy for the it sake of selling a, a pay per view. It felt a little too Duck Dynasty. For yeah. Me. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely. exactly what it felt like. I was gonna like. say channeling Duck Dynasty. And you're working sure. so hard to make these guys feel creepy, and then you stick them in a comedy commercial. And uh -huh. It's just like, hey, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. They should use someone else. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't like that. Or they should just go full creepy with it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, maybe we'll like, be like, you know, why I would want to order Survivor Series because they're creepy. And right. what, what are they going to do with Survivor Series? Yeah. Well, and, and I'm sure they would, being a corporation, they're I not going to want to do that. They're going to keep it safe. I want to so. see Bray, uh, Bray start wrestling again. I feel like we haven't seen him wrestle since his uh, calf was bruised well, I, or well, whatever. I, I, I thought I saw the other day that he's still like maybe two weeks away. Oh, he okay. seems like he no. still needs some recovery time, from what I've heard. But he was cleared to wrestle, I think. And he has—I yeah, mean, we well. really haven't seen him wrestle all that much. I mean, right now yeah. he doesn't really need to uh, he, because he's but, the creepy guy well, in the chair. That, Eventually, we will need I to see it more. I love seeing him wrestle though, like when he pulls out all the those crab creepy, walk. Like, yeah. Crab, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, it's it's, so it's, it's, it's cool, and it's but it's one of those things you can build to. Like, yeah. you don't need to start throwing him in the ring right now. He, it's we can we can build to that. Mm -hmm. Does he get a singles match of Survivor Series, or do we get an elimination match? I think we get a traditional Survivor Series match. Like Team Bray versus Team Miz. Well, then he would need another. Person, he needs a you, need, you would at least need four. Well, Kane would be the other person. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. Or versus maybe like yeah. Sister, it doesn't feel or like sister Abigail family. is the fourth. Or, or, a new or a new family member, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about the Divas title match real quick. Let's. Mm. Brie versus AJ. <laughs> Brie accidentally runs into Nikki at one point during this match towards the end of it. It was a little bit shorter than the other matches that we got tonight. This, is, but this was good, though. The Divas stepped yeah, up tonight. I thought the it Divas was, totally stepped up tonight. I thought, I thought the timing was good. It was on the shorter side of the pay-per-view matches, but I thought the story of the match, it yeah. worked in that time frame. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I see a lot of people, you know, even on our YouTube comments, always trashing Brie. Brie has improved a lot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there, there. Those comments were, were, were okay uh, a while back, but now yeah. she's really improved a lot. Like there was some. She she's was doing some good stuff. Channeling today. her Lance Storm. You, well, you can, you can tell who her fiance. I mean, she, she should be getting better because of who her yeah. fiance is. So uh, there is definitely improvement in her work. Her timing's getting better. Her pacing's getting better. Yep. She just seems to know what she's doing a lot better and not being frantic and, and like you can not. You, you don't see the wheels turning in her head thinking, what's next? Definitely. Yeah. You know, yeah. She's and right she's there in the moment now. She's everything. doing great. Yeah. She's mm -hmm. selling everything yeah. for sure. And I, th I think the thing with her sister was literally the whole point of the match, though, was to kind of get this. Start building animosity. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And I was little... saying, you know, we were talking about divas to get rid of it. I might have put Brie in that category six months ago as far as wrestling goes. Ah, you know, she... 
she's really improved a lot where she's going to be okay in the division. Yeah, she'll be fine. Yeah, she's going to be fine. AJ hits the Black Widow and Brie taps and AJ gets the win. And Tamina is slowly progressing even more and more like Diesel. Mm -hmm. Now now she was wearing like <laughs> yeah. the leather bike vest yeah. tonight. She well, the, she had the, the uh, overalls. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she needs to start doing a power bomb. Yeah, yeah. So? yeah. Instead uh, yeah. of the super oh, fly yes. splash, let yeah, her power definitely. bomb people. She doesn't yeah, need to be awesome. super fly. She's the tallest. Mm -hmm. She's the strongest. Yeah. Let her power bomb. Just because that move her dad did was so iconic doesn't mean you need to give it to the kid who can't do it even close to being as well as they want as the dad, to. Uh, which is they want to show that she's, you know his daughter and Absolutely. that's the same thing like what they're doing in developmental with charlotte rick flair's daughter is they want to do something to show yeah. that this person has a rest i understand lineage. that but that that finishing move is so iconic and it doesn't look anything like the way jimmy did it yeah, it, yeah it, and so i'm okay like you know let's there's other ways for us to know that, it's that, his daughter that should be a, than, a special occasion move like for okay. like austin yeah. once in a blue moon will pull out the million dollar dream right and then you're like oh yeah, but I mean, if exactly. you watch it, when she go watch Superfly, go watch a highlight reel of Superfly hitting that thing. He's arched, he hits belly first, she lands on her feet and then kind of rolls onto yeah. it. And not that it's, it's not a hard not thing to do. It's not the same caliber right. move that he used to do. Absolutely. But she's still a great wrestler. Absolutely. And I'm not crapping on her. And no woman doing really that. does that kind of move. Like, so it's absolutely. Nice to have she's that. definitely a powerhouse. Yeah. I think so. Nobody could do that as well as Jimmy. I mean, mm -hmm. it's yeah. just, I mean, nobody hit that thing. It was such an amazing. It was beautiful. It was poetry, emotion, it was art watching him do that. I mean, Val Venus did it great, but not nearly Val as Venus good as did Snuka. It, absolutely. So uh, that's why it's like if you're gonna, if you're, if you're gonna use something like that, at least be as sparingly. good as the original. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I feel like she should do power bomb because I feel like it's more that's a great move. more devastating like that. move. And it makes more so sense. much bigger than all the and other girls. And speaking of Diesel, yeah, and they go yeah, right exactly, to the yeah. and it's the that's what <laughs> Peters always use. And, you know. yeah. <laughs> Backstage, primetime players playing WWE 2K14 in their in gear. Their gear. Mm -hmm. Backlund comes out and joins them. Yep. Backlund is covered in sweat. No. What Already. Did, yeah. What did we think of I just got all oiled up to play video games. Hey, <laughs> get the baby oil I don't out. Think, I don't think he wanted to play video games at all. He I didn't want to play video no, games? No, no, he was like mad that they were playing video yeah. games. Yeah. But he, then he still he still joined in on the fun. I, I, I love you got a million dollars, Cham. Why not? <laughs> I, I, I loved Backlin in this because we understood what he was saying. He was just like, why are we playing video games? Kids should be reading love and that. writing. That was and so arithmetic. <laughs> and arithmetic. It's, I think He's it's insane. great, though, to see a lot more people in you know if you're gonna do backstage segments during pay-per-views I think this is the way to go and you're pushing something this is through. another thing like that our truth t-shirt segment that we had on raw where there's ultimately they're selling you something yeah. but they've found these new ways to kind of make it a, a, a more interactive segment or something that's not just straight like it's not a commercial you're not, not gonna tune out because you're interested in seeing what happens mm -hmm. some it would be great even if you could see more, like the stories progress yeah. while they're selling if, you something. If Backlund did not get thirty-seven percent in that vote, would he have been on the pay-per-view? Mm. No. They would have been Booker. Oh yeah. Hey, we haven't seen <laughs> PTP in a while. On did Raw he get period, that high so. percentage? Yeah. He got like thirty-one or thirty-two percent, and Booker got like six. Oh yeah, that's right. But we're still gonna see <laughs> Booker. In the I don't understand how that happened. I. <laughs> but anyways. Uh, not, I mean, we not see Booker almost every week. Yeah. 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 I guess that's true. Uh, the main event for tonight. Oh, they did do a the Triple H, Shawn Michaels backstage too. Oh yeah, oh, they're yeah. kind of talking and we they kind of look mad at each anything. other. They yeah. did this twice during the pay per view, I think. And <laughs> one, one time they're laughing, the other time they're arguing. <laughs> Camera angle. Yeah, it was. We very, agree. We yeah. disagree. Yeah. Yeah. They probably shot that yeah. like right after another. Mm -hmm. they they cut, they're like, it wasn't quite as happy this time. They cut out the third one when they were crying and hugging. So. Orton versus Daniel Bryan with the special guest referee Shawn Michaels for the vacant WWE Championship. We have been guaranteed a champion, and tonight it was delivered. Finally. Yes. Daniel Bryan starts tossing chairs in the ring mid-match. There's a chair pile in the center. Orton power bombs Daniel Bryan off the top rope into the chairs. Uh, it was close. Yeah, he kind of. He, he did it towards the edge, but his legs. Daniel really Bryan's hurt. feet nailed the chairs. Oh, wow. okay. His and, and, butt did not touch the chairs. And let me but. just tell you from experience on taking a suplex: when your feet hit 
that if you don't land your feet perfectly it hurts real bad mm -hmm. uh you got to land those that if you if your ankles hit and so i appreciated with his legs hitting those chairs i was like ah that was I'd rather land on my back personally than land that way. It looks scary. Uh, and not land your feet properly, because you can break an ankle or something yeah. on that pretty easily. Triple H comes out, and uh, then all this chaos just ensues. He was not happy. HBK gets hit and doesn't count Daniel Bryan's win. I think the the crowd counted they five counted like to 10. five, or yeah, even longer uh, than that. Daniel Bryan then attacks Triple H, then Shawn Michaels attacks Daniel Bryan. Orton pins Daniel Bryan for the win. HBK counts it, and you get I, I, I love I love champion. how Michaels like butts heads with Bryan or Orton or whoever it was, and immediately Triple H calls for a trainer. <laughs> oh, Shawn Michaels, he's done. <laughs> God knows how much stuff. Oh no, he, well, he's out of shape. I mean, he's uh, he not got, really in training. I, so. I, I can understand. Come on, he could have been really. But he needs really a trainer hurt. right there. You, this, you stick on those stripes, you can get knocked out really uh, easy. What do we think of uh, Shawn Michaels turning on he, his his? Uh, he, he didn't though. This yeah. made no sense kind to me. Of. He he kicked him, and but there was like. He didn't do it for out of malicious intent. It was, and you're like, why'd you do that? Oh, no, well, like, I, under, oh, I understand I exactly why. I, I totally got it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, Brian, I, Brian, Brian flying need Triple H, his best friend, his yeah. best friend, okay. and he's like, dude, you, you uh, may be my no. student, but you can't do that. Yeah, you can't do that. So he kicks he him, super kicks him, and then Orton and then, jumps on him, and he's like, crap, what did like, I just uh, do? Yeah, I gotta count this. But, but now I got did that to a dude that got involved in the match that shouldn't have been in there technically. Yeah, they said no one was gonna get in, no one was gonna get out. I still didn't buy this tomorrow. Yeah, I, I didn't buy the reasoning behind. I think they'll, they'll explain it a lot better on yeah. Raw tomorrow. They were strapped for time, I think. And it it was written a yeah. little bit weird where you can't really tell what happened. But I think I'll that... A problem I, I think we've got is uh, we had that great run from WrestleMania to SummerSlam. Uh, was it Eric, uh, Eric Pankowski or is, is that his name? The writer that was a head writer and he left after SummerSlam. There's a reason the writing hasn't been as good the last couple months. Is the the guy who is responsible? I think the writing's been pretty good. Yeah, the last I don't know. Since well, I, think, I, I don't think it's been as good I since SummerSlam. You can absolutely, I, in my opinion, was yeah. amazing. But, but the finish from, was amazing. I'm not talking about SummerSlam specifically. I'm talking yeah. about six months where this guy was. Re, you know, there was a lot of plot holes. We were complaining about the writing all the time. Then it got all really good, um, and, and and he's no longer there. And I think you can tell. I feel um, like I can tell the writing. I don't think has been as good the last couple. Honestly, months. Honestly, though, I feel like WWE writing is kind of like the presidency of the United States in that you can have <laughs> all of these things enacted while you're the there, and rating? they might yeah. they might not go into enactment until after you've already left office and then someone else gets credit for them. Wait, I've, I've I don't think that it's exactly been... I don't think it's exactly like that. No. It's no, we're not talking about we're not talking we're not talking about States. policies. Hold we're on. talking about things you can change. Hold on, Tom, Tom, what was your finish that you were about the, to say? The finish of this match should have been True, our HBK should have went to Sweet Jim Music, Randy Orton, because Randy Orton was the one that hit him originally. He should have Randy Orton should have ducked hit Daniel Bryan, then he should have pinned him. Also yeah. That would have made more also sense. Also could They could have still did the Triple H thing, but, you know, HBK should have went after Randy Orton, not after Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Then it looks weird now. But yeah, I think, I think this is building towards Triple H and Bryan, though, so I don't know that ultimately it really matters because I don't, I don't think HBK so, is going to be wrestling. So we think uh, WrestleMania 30, Triple H and Daniel Bryan. I think it might be Royal Rumble. To be oh, honest with you, I, it, yeah. I don't know if they can make drag more it sense. Out. I don't know if they it can drag that sense. out. It would make more sense Royal Rumble because uh, WrestleMania makes sense to me the way they're going. That Daniel Bryan of the main event for wrestling for the WWE title. But shouldn't Daniel yeah. Bryan be in the Royal Rumble it. though? At Royal Rumble, yes, that's I, the kind of thing it's signing like. Yeah, well, maybe and, maybe he's right. in that too. He should he should That'd actually awesome. win the Royal Rumble. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. he should be banned from another title shot until and then, he wins the Royal Rumble. And then have his match at or or that be number one in the Rumble. Or he's in the Rumble, wins it, and then he faced Triple H at Elimination Chamber. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you could do that. Overall thoughts, what did we With think With his title of, shot on the line. Yes. What did we think of tonight's paper? Overall, I thought it was excellent. Yeah. Um, like what you said earlier, the undercard was stellar. Yeah. Um, yeah, honestly, like, the two Hell in a Cell matches overall, to me, didn't deliver as much as I expected them to. Right. But, I mean, they weren't bad no, by any means. Fine. They were entertaining. But, I mean... I match one was the best of the night. Yeah. The tag. The I think it's just so entertaining tonight. Yeah, Hell, Hell in a Cell though as a gimmick is hard sometimes because there is so many great matches and so many instances that you can't really repeat. 
of, yeah. of things. So it's, yeah. it's just a hard it thing stale. to capitalize it's on. It's a good yeah. point. Is, I think they did well for what they yeah, had to offer us. It's hard to do the same gimmick match twice in the same night. You yeah. know, yep. I mean, when you do Elimination Chamber or any of that stuff and you have two of them, it's like, ah, uh, because you have to be really careful. Like, you guys make sure you don't do anything like this. Right. Because you have to be very careful then you're not, you're not uh, redoing spots. Mm -hmm. And both matches were very different. And like, yes, and absolutely. Like, and yes. Another one. And another one. Absolutely, the and one. they purposely do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they yeah. have to. They have to be very, very careful the, not to do that. But the punk one was definitely the. Hopefully, it's the culmination of that feud, right. and it's done with now. But would it almost be better on. if you know, only do one Hell in a Cell match, oh, and then yeah. mm -hmm. you the, everything that was done in those two matches you can only do in you only do in the one. Yeah. It makes it a little bit more special and. So well, then no, we should I, not have a pay per view named the exactly. type of match. Yeah. I, I actually don't like <laughs> I having a Hell in a Cell pay per view. Okay. With the brand not being split, why are we doing two of anything? It's just, just I agree. arbitrary yep. just for, for the reason that we used to have two of everything. It's, yeah. it's and that's why I keep saying with the titles either re split the brands or let's go back to Please. normal. Please. Yes. Let's go. We've got all these things that are, are left over from the brand split that just don't make sense. Yeah. Having double of stuff where every where it's one show now. People are saying to retire the, the world on. Uh, Cena. Uh, Cena versus whoever WWE champion is at Mania yeah. for the unification. Yeah. I would, then, I would like what that. If they, what if they retired and unif before Sandow got his shot? That'd be <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. And, then, awesome. and then unify the so Intercontinental fun. and the United States or make the United States something a different type of title. Yeah, television. Kind of uh, television. Like, title. Like, or a heart. I don't think a TV title works these days no. uh, in a WWE. One that's forced to be defended every week on TV? Uh, they can't even defend the ones they have now. Yeah. Well, there's, <laughs> if it was uh, something like a hardcore title, not uh, obviously I know and the they're other doing titles, that, but... but see, the reason for the TV titles were because all the other major titles were always on pay-per-views. So you got a title match. We see all the titles uh, defended on television. So yeah. then you would just have to say... Do we, though? We we do sometimes. We will. You used to never see it. It never happened. Now you can see it. So I don't know. Well, I mean, I, I always enjoyed the television title. Ten minute time limit. Yeah. And then like if it got to the draw, oh the person, oh he lost I his shot, you or eventually got to a pay per view where oh now there's no time limit on You'd the pay per view. You have to redo some things. I guess you could do it if you redid some things think, and did it properly. I think that Christian and Clum are going to duke this out <laughs> later tonight on our app. But unfortunately, <laughs> on the after buzz half now. we are out of time for the pay-per-view after show. So, guys, Plum, put yourself over. Uh, you're, you just stole the Quasta's. Uh, yeah. That's gimmick infringement, Kathy uh -oh. Kelly. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter at Columinator. You can follow me on Twitter at C Rosie VOC and check me out on The Voice, He's Bound and Down, and SmackDown. Yeah, and NXT. NXT. Uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter at Tom the Com, Supernatural Tuesdays, and Main Event Wednesdays. Guys, you know I'm the Walking Dale on Instagram <laughs> and on Twitter, and you can find me on YouTube on Dishing on Movies, Kathy. Guys, thank you so much for watching tonight. You can find me on Twitter at Katherine Kelly. You can find me here doing a bunch of shows for AfterBuzz. <laughs> you can find AfterBuzz TV on Twitter at AfterBuzz TV. So until the next pay per view, catch us on our other shows. See you later. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.